Umar bin Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu once entered upon Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu and he was grabbing his tongue. Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu enters upon him and he sees him in regret holding on to his tongue and he says to him, stop, may Allah forgive you. Why are you of all people, O Abu Bakr, grabbing your tongue? And Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu responds and he says, this piece of flesh has taken me to dangerous places. This tongue of mine has put me in severe trouble. This was a man whose tongue was full of sidq, of truthfulness, whose actions were full of sidq. But he's holding his tongue and he's saying, this tongue of mine has taken me to dangerous places. On the other hand, the quality of the hypocrites that is mentioned both in the Quran and the Sunnah, they love the way that they sound. They talk a lot and people listen to them. And so they comment about everything. The Prophet ﷺ used different terms for them. That they love to weigh in on everything and they weigh in in a way that sounds intelligent. But at the end of the day, the Prophet ﷺ describes them as a hated people, the most hated of you to me and the furthest from me on the day of judgment. You talk too much and you love the way that you sound. And in one narration, the Prophet ﷺ said that Allah hates the eloquent person from the men. Now, obviously, eloquence is a good thing if it's used for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But in this situation, the Prophet ﷺ said, the one whose tongue moves around the way that the tongue of a cow moves around. And the way the scholars explain that is that when you watch the way that a cow eats its fodder, it's a nasty sight. And the Prophet ﷺ is saying, this is the way that you should look at people whose tongues are so loose and long and comment on everything and their tongues spin around. And usually a person who's eloquent, a person who's poetic, a person who sounds intelligent, even when he has no idea what he's talking about, weighs in on things that he has no business weighing in on and speaks too much and ends up in a place of mocking people, making fun of people, in a place of consuming the awrat, the honor, the dignity of their brothers and sisters. And so compare and contrast. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu grabbing his tongue, the other person the Prophet ﷺ mentioning, having a tongue that slaps around the way that the tongue of a cow slaps around. Now fast forward to the Day of Judgment. Every single part of you that was used for Allah is nur, is light on the Day of Judgment. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will preserve and beautify that part of you. The eyes that shed tears for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never be touched by the fire. On a day when people's eyes will be to the ground and afraid, those eyes will be beaming with joy. The places on your body of wudu will be shining on the day of judgment. The Prophet said, he will know you by the signs, the marks of your wudu. And people don't do wudu unless they're praying. So people of Salah, the wounds of the martyrs will be light, musk on the day of judgment. May Allah Azza wa Jal make that our situation as well. Allahumma ameen. Light shining from people. Every part of your body that was used for Allah. Your feet that you walk to the masjid with. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it nur on the day of judgment. It is light upon light upon light. And one of the du'as of the Prophet Sallallahu when he's coming to the masjid is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places ala lisani nura. Make my tongue light. Now what I'm about to say here is not something that I'm making up from my own. The fewest parts on the day of judgment that will be full of light are the tongues. Meaning you have people that maybe have the light of wudu, they maybe have the light on their eyes, but their tongues are darkness on the day of judgment. Darkness upon darkness upon darkness. Now some people will be blessed to have light on their tongues as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst them. Allahumma ameen. Then you have other scenes. And dear brothers and sisters, I want you to put yourself in that scene for a moment. As you're looking around on the day of judgment, and you're seeing the different people, you'll have the likes of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu with light shining from his mouth. And then you look and you see another person that's walking and they don't just have no light from their tongue, their tongues are made of fire. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said that people of two faces in this dunya will walk around on the day of judgment with two tongues of fire. What a scene. A'udhu billah. May Allah not make us amongst them. Allahumma ameen. And then you arrive at the book to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to meet Allah with your deeds. And Sa'id ibn Jubayr radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrates that a person will be brought forth before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he's expecting to see all of these good deeds in his book. And when his book is given to him, he sees none of his good deeds. فَيَقُولُ يَا رَبْ هَذَا كِتَابُ غَيْرِي My Lord, this is somebody else's book. I can swear I used to go to the masjid for Jum'ah. I can swear where I used to observe Laylatul Qadr. I remember 10 days of the Hijjah. Where's my Salah? Ya Allah, I gave Sadaqah. Where's the charity, Ya Allah? This must be a mistake, but it's not. And it's said to him, your Lord does not forget. 
All the backbiting, all the nastiness, it destroyed everything that was in your book. It wiped it out. It's not there anymore. On the other hand, Al-Qayyim rahimahullah says that a person shows up afraid. I don't know what I'm going to see in my book. I don't know if those good deeds made it through. He shows up on the Day of Judgment with sins the size of mountains and he finds that the dhikr of Allah that used to come from his mouth wiped it all out. It destroyed those mountains of sins from his book. He had personal sins. He had things that he was struggling with. He was afraid. But he never used to use this tongue in a way that was displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He used to talk about other people. He used to worry about himself. And he used to do the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He used to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so he shows up on the day of judgment. He says, what book is this? Pleasantly surprised. Oh my servant, all of the goodness that you used your tongue for wiped out all of those sins that you were worried about. And what is istighfar? Seeking forgiveness, where the Prophet ﷺ says that Allah will ask a person about their sins. Did you seek forgiveness for those sins after they feel like they're doomed? And those sins start to turn into good deeds to the point that the person says, Ya Rabbi, the angel forgot to write down some of those sins because he rerouted with his tongue, he recalibrated with his tongue. And when they go to the mizan, when they go to the scale, the person who held back his tongue, collecting good deeds from other people and never giving up any of his own, let people backbite, let people say, let people do. Never gave up any of his own. And as Al-Muzani rahimahullah said, he would wish that he never ever responded to anything and that everybody in the world backbited him. Why? Because I didn't give up any of mine. You gave up all of yours. On the other hand, Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know who the bankrupt person is? That person who has their salah, their siyam, their zakat, all of those things. And all of it is gone because of mostly the actions of the tongue. Sabba hadha wa shatama hadha wa akhtaba hadha wa daraba hadha. Other than the hitting part, all of that is with your tongue, the backbiting, the slander, the violent speech or abusive speech that you use towards others, the mockery, that's all with the tongue. The only thing that's missing is a physical hit, meaning the reason why most people end up bankrupt on that day is because of their tongue. And when a person now crosses a sirat, crosses over the bridge and ends up in one of the two destinations, may Allah Azza wa make us from the people of Al-Jannah and not from the people of Al-Nar. Allahumma ameen. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says to Mu'adh radiallahu ta'ala anhu, there is nothing, nothing that causes more people to fall face first into hellfire, more so than hasa'id al-lisan, than the things that they stored in their tongues. He said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in another hadith, the person says a word, they don't think too much about it, and it lands them into hellfire. You literally drop because of a word that you say recklessly, not thinking about it. And at the same time, you might say something that's pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you don't think too much about it, but you had the inspiration to say the right thing at the right time, and it lands you in the highest ranks of paradise. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst them. Allahumma ameen. When most people are brought out of the hellfire and put into paradise and they have to be purified of something, more people will have to go into the purification of their tongues than any other part of their body. I want you to leave with one message. Let your tongue take you to Jannah. Don't let it take you to Jahannam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned that more people will go to hellfire face first because of what they have stored in their tongues. Think about your tongue as a plane and you're planting the seeds of hellfire in your tongue. But you know what else he said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? That when he met Ibrahim Alayhi Salam on the night of Laylatul Isra' Wal Mi'raj and Ibrahim Alayhi Salam described to him Al-Jannah, Ibrahim sent Salam to this Ummah and he said, tell them that Jannah is plains and that the harvest of those plains, the seeds of those plains are Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. You have the plains of Al-Jannah where you plant the seeds of dhikr, where palaces and trees trees await. And you have the plains of your tongue, the harvest of your tongue, where the seeds of hellfire are planted, and there's nothing but regret on the day of judgment. And the connection between the sanctity of the honor of people and the glorifying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, qala Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, keep yourself busy with the remembrance of Allah because that is a cure. Avoid the remembrance of people because that is disease. Don't talk about people, talk about Allah. The more you're using your tongue for the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the less you will use it for the dhikr of other people and that which is negative and that which could cause you destruction and doom. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those whose tongues are light on the day of judgment and whose tongues become a means by which they enter into the highest ranks of paradise alongside as siddiq and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa above him and his family and companions and the greatest ones that came before us. And may Allah azza wa protect us from using these tongues in ways that would cause us to fall in the pits of the fire. Allahumma ameen.